In the past weeks, optimism over a nuclear deal with Iran's regime has fizzled. And according to news reports and statements made by the parties involved in the ongoing talks in Vienna, the key point of tension is the removal of the Revolutionary Guards, IRGC, from the U.S. list of foreign terrorist organizations, FTO. The delisting of the IRGC has become a point of dispute, not only between the parties involved in the nuclear talks, but also among regime officials and politicians in the U.S. At first glance, nuclear deal seems to be a simple equation. The regime dials down its nuclear activities and returns within the limits of the 2015 Nuclear Accord. In exchange, the U.S. lifts all sanctions related to the regime's nuclear activity. This was the original proposition that was being discussed in the talks that began last year. But in recent months, reports indicated that the regime raised the stakes by requiring that the terrorist designation of the IRGC by the Trump administration in 2019 be lifted. As is evident, the terror designation of the IRGC is not related to the regime's nuclear program, which makes it a tough sell as part of any agreement reached in Vienna. So why is the regime predicating any deal on the removal of the IRGC from the terror list? And why is it doing so while its officials are trying the revival of the country's economy to the lifting of sanctions? The reality is that the IRGC has a disproportionate share of all levers of power in Iran. It has a near monopoly over Iran's economy and trade. It controls the regime's foreign policy through its network of diplomat terrorists and spies. Moreover, it has a large sway over other aspects of the regime's policy making. The cabinet of the regime's current president, Ibrahim Rassi, is filled with IRGC veterans. The speaker of the Majli parliament is also a former IRGC commander. Therefore, the IRGC's terrorist designation would cast a shadow on any benefit the regime gains from a potential deal with world powers. Theoretically, the regime could find other ways to navigate the complexities caused by the IRGC's terrorist status. It could reduce the IRGC's leverage on the economy, diplomacy, and politics. But with the IRGC being the regime's key pillar of survival, undermining its power and influence in any way would lead to the regime undoing. The IRGC's pivotal role has become even more accentuated in recent years as more and more IRGC commanders have found their way into key political and economic posts, not to mention its increasing role in cracking down on dissent at home. This is why the delisting of the IRGC has become a red line for the regime, and it is showing zero tolerance at even so much as hinting at the contrary. For example, in a recent interview with the regime's Channel 1 TV network, Foreign Minister Hossein Amira Dolomhan said that senior IRGC officials constantly remind the foreign ministry to do whatever is needed for the country's benefit, and if the agreement is in the country's interest, then do not prioritize the issue of the IRGC. Amira Dolian's remarks were immediately met with a backlash from senior officials and politicians with close ties with regime supreme leader Ali Khamenei. Hossein Sharit Badari, the managing editor of Kayan Daily, accused Amira Dolian of implying that IRGC officials have surrendered and called on IRGC commanders to clarify and correct the foreign minister's remarks. And MP Ali Kezran slammed Amina Dolian's remarks as being against national interests and causing a divide between the people and the IRGC. On the other hand, speaking at the Doha Forum Conference, Kamal Karazi, a close advisor to Khamenei, stressed that the Revolutionary Guards must be removed from the U.S. terrorist list. Uh, IRGC, GC, certainly has to be removed from the list. Meanwhile, in the U.S., politicians who have been pushing for the removal of the IRGC from the FTO are also having a tough time selling it at home and in the region. The IRGC is the main body behind Tehran's foreign terrorism and war mongering. In March, the IRGC carried out a missile attack against Erbil. Iraq and its terrorist proxies are causing mayhem in the region. In the past months alone, the Houthis in Yemen, funded and backed by the IRGC, have carried out several drone and missile attacks against United Arab Emirates and Saudi Arabia. In the U.S., lawmakers from both sides of the aisle have expressed opposition to any agreement that would aggravate the IRGC's terrorist activities in the region. Republican senators have warned that any deal that does not have the approval of Congress will be dismantled by a future Republican administration. Middle East countries are also concerned that the removal of the IRGC from the FTO will further cause insecurity on their soil as it will give the regime free reign to fund its terrorist proxies in their countries. 
They are now looking toward regional alliances and agreements to ensure their security should the U.S. proceed with giving Tehran such concessions. And in the past few years, it has become evident that any agreement that focuses solely on the regime's nuclear program and does not take into account its terrorist threat, ballistic missile program, and human right abuses will only result in more insecurity and war. American diplomats have tried to reassure politicians at home and abroad that they will continue to maintain a tough stance on the IRGC. Speaking in Doha on March 27th, U.S. envoy Robert Mali said, The IRGC will remain sanctioned under U.S. law and our perception, our views, our policy towards the IRGC will not have changed. And during a visit to Israel, U.S. State Secretary Anthony Blinken said, Deal or no deal, we will continue to work together and with other partners to counter Iran's destabilizing behavior in the region. At this point, the Vienna talks will depend on the West resolve to take a tough stance against the world's number one state sponsor of terrorism and its main terrorist arm, the IRGC. What is clear is that any deal that does not take a holistic approach to war the regime's multitude threats will, like its predecessor, be short-lived and make the region less secure.